Hello guys. Um, so I have a little bit of an update as far as fertility goes. So today I had an appointment and I met with a genetic counselor and a someone in uh, maternal fetal medicine. I wasn't exactly sure why I was coming to that appointment other than the fact that I do take a beta blocker. Um, I have tachycardia, which is a fast heart rate, and I have palpitations when I'm not on the medication. So I assumed that's what it was, but they also seemed a little confused. They were like, so why are you here? <laughs> um, but basically, so they ended up just going over what the risks would be if I stayed on the beta blocker and that obviously it would be better if I was able to get off the medication. However, the risks are pretty low. Um, it could affect the growth of the baby. They said sometimes people that are taking a beta blocker end up having a baby that's a little bit underweight. However, they they usually see that in people that are taking a beta blocker because of high blood pressure. So he said that he was pretty sure the blood pressure had something to do with the baby weight or that's what testing I guess points to um and so since I take it for tachycardia he doesn't think that there's anything to worry about again it's one of those things where it would probably be better to not be on it and it's probably okay if I need to be on it so when I was pregnant with Alistair I was able to easily wean off the medication because my heart rate was lower when I was pregnant which is a natural thing and so I would just plan to do the same thing again so when I am able to when I get pregnant um, we will just attempt to wean off the beta blocker and if my heart does fine without it stay off of it if my heart is still being bothered and I have a racing heart rate and palpitations then I could stay on it and I'm at a low dose so yeah um, and then meeting with the genetic counselor I didn't realize that I was meeting with the genetic counselor and it was all very awesome and interesting so the reason why I was meeting with a genetic counselor was they they went over a little bit of the different genetic tests that you can get during pregnancy. Um, Hans and I have already decided what we want to do with that, so I felt that was unnecessary to talk about because I like I've already talked about it with my OBGYN. But um, we also talked about the fact that I had previously been diagnosed with a genetic disorder. I guess that's what you would call it called Marfan syndrome and I actually have a whole video talking about the diagnosis and what Marfan syndrome is so if you guys want to see that you can check that out on my channel um, but yeah when I was younger I was diagnosed with Marfan syndrome and it's important to talk to someone about about having Marfan syndrome if you're going to be pregnant because it can be very dangerous to go through a pregnancy if you have Marfan syndrome because it's a connective tissue disorder and it affects your heart. Um, it can be pretty dangerous like I already just said. You can have something called aortic dissection I believe if you are going through labor and basically that's really bad. <laughs> so it's better to know in advance if you have Marfan syndrome or not because, you know, there's different protocol. There's different things that they can watch out for to be a little bit more proactive if you did have Marfan syndrome. Now, I had a second opinion, I think in my 20s, and I was told that I don't actually have Marfan syndrome. I have some of the traits that which is the reason why I was diagnosed with it. And I was diagnosed with it over 20 years ago when they didn't know too much about Marfan syndrome. Um, I'm trying not to go too much in it since I have a whole video on this, but basically there are a lot more genetic tests that I can do now that would look for if I really had Marfan syndrome and it could look at other disorders that are very close to Marfan syndrome that maybe I have since I did have quite a few traits of Marfan syndrome and it would be important to know during pregnancy again so that we can take the right protocol to avoid anything happening and we would be able to check those things in Alistair or the new baby whenever I get pregnant. 
So it was all really good because recently that Marfan syndrome video on my channel has been getting a ton of views and a lot of people comment on it saying, hey, I have Marfan syndrome and just so you know, like I went, th I had a pregnancy and I had to have open heart surgery or someone said like, hey, you should probably get another checkup because if you were once diagnosed with it, there's probably a reason why. And it's all very helpful. Those comments have been very helpful. I've actually been thinking about it a lot. And so this just kind of got the ball rolling so that I could talk with another genetic doctor soon. Like they put in a referral for me to talk to a genetic doctor just to go over. So I think it's a blood test and they would just like look at all of my physical traits to see if I maybe am at risk for anything else that's close to Marfan syndrome that would affect pregnancy. So hopefully that all makes sense. It was a lot of information, but again, it was really good. And I think that it's better to be proactive if you can for certain things during pregnancy. Other than that, everything looks really good. Um, I recently had a few people say, hey, do you drink or something about, they asked if I knew the risks of drinking caffeine during pregnancy. And um, it's probably because I drink coffee and I talk about coffee all the time on my channel. Um, I don't drink coffee every single day, but even if I did, I would follow the same exact thing that I did when I was pregnant with Alistair, and I drank zero caffeine when I was pregnant with Alistair. However, I know that it's okay to have a little bit of caffeine during pregnancy. It's kind of like one of those things like wine, like you could have a glass of wine every now and again. It's going to be better if you don't. Same with caffeine. It's okay to have a little bit. It's okay, but it's better if you don't. And um when I was pregnant with Alistair, I like followed all of the rules. Like, yeah, I didn't do anything you weren't supposed to do during pregnancy and I would do the same thing, but there's no need for me to stop the caffeine right now. Um, I don't drink a lot. I know it probably, yeah, it probably seems like I do, but even when I get like a coffee from Dutch Bros, I drink like half of it. And so, um, there's no worry there with how much caffeine I take intake. Um, what else? So the next step is to wait for my period to come and then we will get the ball rolling with an HSG dye test. That's when I will get that. I haven't got it yet. And then also we would do the IUI and that will be, that'll end up being somewhere in December. I honestly, we will probably find out if I'm pregnant somewhere around Christmas. So I will definitely keep you guys updated, especially once I do the HSG test. Oh, I will start Clomid like on day three or four, I think, of my period. So all that will be coming up. I will update you guys when something new happens, but it'll be a couple weeks. So don't, you know, think it's weird if you don't hear from me for a couple weeks. There's just nothing else to do except wait for my period to come. And that's due probably right at the beginning of December. So that's probably when you'll hear from me again. So I start the Clomid, I will do an HSG test, and then we do the IUI. The only thing that would hold up an IUI is if anything didn't look great during the HSG test. So if there was a blockage or something that they found and that couldn't be pushed through with the dye, then we probably would not do the IUI. So that's the only thing that could hold it up. It is a possibility, but I've had an ultrasound and I've had a lot of hormone tests by now and everything looks really good. So my doctor is pretty certain that we will end up doing the IUI, but I'll let you guys know if that's held up for any reason. And yeah, there's just going to be a lot of waiting. So I do appreciate your support. I like reading the comments on these videos when I make them. It just gives me a lot of hope and I'm feeling so hopeful, you guys. I'm feeling like, like I'm going to get pregnant. I, that's how I feel and I haven't felt that, that way in a long time. I don't mean to get emotional, but I'm just really excited because I just really, really am feeling like it is going to be in our near future to have a baby. Well, or at least get pregnant. Then it's going to be a lot of months of waiting, but yeah, I'm really excited. And I want to say once again, thank you. A lot of you um, donated to our GoFundMe. I'm feeling like we are totally okay with the financial part of it. Um, once we do the HSG and the IUI and all that, um, I'm feeling like we're doing okay, doing great. So, um, thank you to everyone who had donated. Um, yeah, I don't really feel that there's a need to ask for donations again. So, um, but thank you all and I'll talk to you soon. I'm excited. Bye.